There are many different ways to present Black History celebration, which is always in the month of October. And I've subtitled this Culture and Diversity because it is mixed up with Black History. There's culture, there's diversity, and so on. Since 1995, when I was a student at Ruskin College, I joined the African Caribbean Association. And they celebrated Black History Month, and I've been going around venue to venue, and just reciting or seeing or joining in listening to them. And it's only two years ago that I decided I would really have an exhibition. Now that I'm a postgraduate student, and I've got a bit more time on my hands to go around and collect different items and to read more about black history, black people. My aim in doing this exhibition is to promote racial harmony. And I've always wanted to do that since I was a little girl. I came to England when I was 13. And I found the atmosphere of a living with different races quite different from Jamaica. In Jamaica, we have many races, all races there, Asian, Europeans, uh, Africans, there's different religions, different faiths, and we live quite peacefully. And it's not expressed enough as you would hear them talk about Jamaicans and crime. You don't hear them talk about the peaceful existence that we have there. And that's the sort of atmosphere, environment I would like to see reigning in England. But of course, Jamaica is a very small country, so you know, you can't expect it to be exactly the same. And so it was my desire in all those years in my youth to see another Jamaica in, you know, wherever I live. So to refresh our minds. I will just write, read what I've written, the definition of history. According to my dictionary by Ernest Baker, 1932, page 521, defines history as a systematic record of past events, especially those of importance in the development of or peoples, a study of books dealing with the past of any country with people or science to relate or record to chronicle ancient history, history to the end of the Western Empire, AD 476, medieval history, AD 476 to the Reformation, AD 1570, modern history from AD 1517 to the present day. And so I like to read, and I want to let you know that my house is full of books. And one of the books I've got is Christopher Columbus and his discoveries. And some of the pictures are on the table. I'm fascinated by discoveries. And this topic, to me, is very big. There's no way I can say what all that I want to say about black history here today. Now, I've met many black people who said, all we read about in books is about black slaves. They're not very happy about that because the slaves are really people doing drudgery work, work that didn't seem important. And I went home and I considered, as a trained nurse, I read and I say, no, that's not the case. The work that slaves did was vital, was the life-saving work. They did work such as housekeepers, maids, cooks, there were farmers, hunters, musicians, entertainers, health promoters, artists, agriculturists, producing crops for trade and industry. And this is where I see on this table many of the things that are produced, handed down to us. Some are in tins now, some are in packages. But to me, trade is very important a country and we've brought many of the things grown in black countries to this country, we're using them in our everyday
everyday lives. So that is where my emphasis lies on the history of black people. So, so, so it's well taught. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's ingrained. You know. It's certainly taught. Yeah. yeah. So. I know. Uh, his name is Namburo. That's him. Yes, that's him. Anyhow, you can see how they pulled the wood out and put a cork in to make sure that it uh, stays open. Again, you just peel it. It's very firm. Do you need a sharp knife? You know, feel that. It's really quite firm. And then it would take longer to cook the potatoes because the texture is, you know, harder. And then what I do sometimes the only one the they've got in Tesco is the white yam. Yeah. Yeah. But the yellow yam, we just can't get we used to get that. But the Americans are buying that up, you see. And it's so nice. I prefer the yellow yam. The Americans are buying that up, you see. And it's so nice. I prefer the yellow yam. What does cocoa taste like? Potato, in a way. Yeah. Yes. It goes soft like potato. You know, yeah. be careful you don't overcook it. Yeah. But, uh, My other pub nice. comes because I like this country. Since I was 13, it was almost love at first sight. When I came off the plane, for some reason I love this country. And I'm proud to say it. So I can write about many things, and this one is falling leaves, and we're coming into autumn now, so I think it's appropriate to read this poem. Autumn is upon us. Notice the falling leaves. Everywhere the evenings draw in early darkness. Heart and soul must remain grateful for all mercies. Leaves, large or small, have lovely shape, turning color from green to orange and to brown. Fallen leaves are beautiful wherever they fall and escape, looking like the ground is in leafy patchwork decorative gown. The mighty wind blows strong and cold. Now there is need to wear woolen clothes Cold, mighty wind affecting the old, if not properly dressed, and out watching the landscape of fallen leaves. Thoughts of winter approaching before our eyes, leaves left to rot. Memories of fallen leaves to be used as compost. If living in Oxford with the many spires, in the passing of autumn and dark evenings drawing in, Obscuring spires, viewing for many living in Oxfordshire, for many there will be evenings in. Yet in daylight there is beauty, of varying shades of autumn fallen leaves on the ground. Environment of mingled leaf colours drawing the eyes to a duty, to see and appreciate all there is around. poem I've written is called A Visit to Chateau. And I wrote this when my children were small. And some people here won't know where Chateau is. But it's near Headington. When the children were small, I would go with them in the holidays and we would have a picnic on the grass and really enjoy ourselves, enjoy the environment. I, and it was really lovely. And now I have six grandchildren. They've been here and they've gone. <laughs> so you can see that I love children. 
I love people. A visit to Shotova. Mother and three small children in the mood to explore. A change of scene, sitting under the trees for shade and cover. Taking a break from the chores, mother drives to shot over. Mid-morning at shot over, a few people walking their dog. Bird song fills the air. Some people take a jog. The sky clear and bright, rabbits running and disappearing on the shrubs. A pleasant and enjoyable environment, plenty greenery and wild flowers. In the spring, bluebells galore, looking like a blue carpet on the ground. The hour has gone, now it's time to get back to the chores. We enjoyed visiting this area of Oxford's pleasant land. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. You see, because they would sleep with the women, the oh, yes. Yes. and oh, discard yes. them. After yes. slavery, then slaves were able to yes. marry and, you know, pick up the pieces. But yes. the slaves, so, so I've got slave owners in my, that's my Scottish, um, Scottish start. Then. And, and, and uh, lucky thing, you talked about that, so you can take me in the Scottish. Is that your tartan? Yeah, the Macintosh yeah. and the, um, Is this because your ancestors were in this father? Uh, through Mary, you said? No, my dad. Through, um, it's about uh, a princess who wants to uh, revenge herself on mankind because an ancestor of hers um, was raped. And uh, she has a lot of suitors and she asks them riddles. And if they can't uh, get the right answer, they're beheaded. This is in China. <laughs> I'm one of the princes, and I'm the one who guesses the right answer. <laughs> and she can't guess my name, so I triumph as I sing in the aria. Oh, 
the volume in which he sings. And you know, we only live once. And I think if we watch this sort of good practice, you know, practice at home how to perform, practice, open our mouths, honest to God. I mean, I'm in the choir and Richard knows sometimes, you know, we don't all open our mouths and give the best to our society. And Richard is one good example. He opens his mouth, he pronounces it, but thank you, Richard. Recently, I talked to somebody and I was asking about the, how old you need to be before you uh, before you are considered uh, an adult. And he told me that the deciding thing was how it was exactly how you considered yourself when you considered yourself to be an adult. And I felt that a young man was somebody who was still trying to achieve things. And an old man was somebody who had recognized that he could not achieve the things he had set out to achieve. So cloud watching is the difference between somebody who is trying to achieve things that is heard in clouds and somebody who has given up and is now watching clouds. In days gone by, I soft the song tsunami on the single muzzle of the flute. In days gone by, I heard the strobing song and I rescued whales. Today I watch the clouds where once I herded them, because I listened and I learned. I've known the fury in a drum of gin. I've seen powder cakes of pride implode. I've seen the power in a please diffused. I've seen the spinning and the skewing in the prefecture of words. Today I watch the clouds where once I herded them, because I looked and I saw the glimmer in the eye. I sensed the malice in the trap. I soft the looping and the snaking and the knotting of the snare. Today I watch the clouds because I saw my life decanted in a puddle in the street, in a sipping blotch of wine, a solemn watermark whose borders traced the map of Africa. I've known the damnation of the doomed and the despair of the rich and the loving embrace of the dead, of the warring bomber and his hall and the common bliss of patient worms that twine ecstatic at a seamless button of a spawn of men whose luscious cadavers are assured thereby. I've known the peace of consonants. I've seen the indifferent consequence of peace. Because I walked the careful paths that end in symmetries, and I thought the cautious thoughts that tend to certainties. My love song, purged of hyperbole, would who will soon be still. And my knowledge was a brackish pool whose mentor was a tumid hurricane. Today I watch the clouds because I see that fires end in ash. I see that Idris is dead and Idris will soon be dead, although she is not yet born. I see the twisting match, the forest fire, the glorious sun will end in ash, as well the human furniture of life, the fiery zeal that burns in men. I watch the clouds because I see my laurels wither. I see my sons of love becoming men of war. I see the bricks I burnt for shelter, hurled in war. And I know I'll sooner stop Mount Meru for her poem than vainly hear the pregnant clouds of Armageddon, which will burst. There is a beauty and a horror that is the same old song. There is a beauty and a horror that is the same unfinished song. I'll take a deep breath and try. Because life at its best is the same old song. I'll take a deep breath and try again. Because life at its best is... Thank you. Now, nursing as a profession, I have always wanted to be a nurse. Just like my aunt Molly. By the age of eight, visiting the sick with my mother, I wish to be a good nurse. To be accepted for training made me happy and jolly. Starting my training at the General Hospital in ashton on the line gave me a sense of belonging. Deep inside there was a feeling that was just fine. To heal the sick kept me going. To see a smile upon faces and waving goodbye on discharge, contemplating and appreciating all graces, make my heart with love for life enlarge. Uh, yeah. Today, 
Yes, yes, he was singing, yeah. he sing Latin, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I would revive Latin just for the sake of, well, my... <laughs> <laughs> And I did come down here and they said, maybe go there. So I go up to the library. Now, crime blood takes its place from the Bible. When the very first homicide in the Bible was the killing of Abel by Cain. And the Bible records that the blood of Abel cried out for justice to God. And we also know that subsequently the blood of Christ cried better things. But I always ask myself, particularly when months like this come by, when you review what has happened, what would, you know, what would God make of all this? So that's crying blood. Tonight, I feel no kinship with the human race. I'm sorry, but today I feel affinity with clotting blood smeared on a pitted ghetto street beside the broken skull of an alien child barely ten winters old crushed by the triumphant indifference of the ruling race. I'm sorry, for I know how infra-deep this is, because I estimate the months and months of blinkless surveillance you now invest in me. But up there in the cynic skies, I see your jet planes frozen flatulence, and I wonder what you sought so far above the earth, when everywhere I look, the cries of dying children fill my eyes. Tonight, I feel no kinship with the human race. But look around, everywhere you look, you'll see the, your aliens staring back at you. Tonight, when crimson streams break out, don't expect decency from me. For, your, for, your, for when I look at your, your, your sinking storms, I see a welling storm break out, and I know that something different has come about because of you. Tonight, when I stare down the paths of crimson stairs, don't expect decency when brooks begin to brim. For your, for your decency will end where works of art have started, and the end begins to matter when nothing more has been done. This is crying blood. Thank you. From me to you. Being conscious of what came before, my seat of consciousness seems hot and raw. This is for those that enjoy the pirate's boat, packed like pilchards, and for those who'd rather float. For the rebels who got shot trying to chase freedom. For the girl who has not stopped crying rape and bleeding. For the fact that our forefathers went through this. Why is it we now think ignorance is bliss? Has Tubman and Garvey's work been done in vain? If so, Cuffy and Bosso didn't deserve pain. It's the kings and exes that revolutionized. Now it's bling, sex, and being materialized. We are the only ones that can better ourselves. I'm talking about our own health and our own wealth. Something we can call our own. Either that or we should leave and go home. Please let's wake up sisters and brothers, forget the hate, let's love one another. It's a pol political time we are living in, so it's a critical time we keep God within. And that's The tree is a mythical tree which takes the form of a temple. Beneath the tree where often we did shade, when at our feet pagoda blossom laid, jasmine sweet their summer, their summer perfume aired, tranquil deep the passing moments shared. 
vivid sky adorned with silvery cloud, the change abrupt as thunder echoed loud. Rain tumbling from the heavenly sea gave succor to the old pagoda tree. Then came intruders and fields on their backs, sat there down with dum-dums in their sacks. The hope of ages soon were made to flee as they ransacked the old pagoda tree. Blossoms young, they are opened, all did fall. Pagoda was deprived of fruit and all. Graceful tree that once stood proud and tall, crashed neath the surge of cannonball. Lies now the soil, barren, dry and brown. There who once laughed, now wear a naked frown. Pagoda tree became another's crown. That was the moment when the wall fell down. Thank you. No. <laughs> sure. This poem I did because I'm concerned about what's happening to our coming generations. That is, the young black people. And I call it, Where Are You Now, Bram Child? Where are you now, Bram Child? Are you enduring pure and mild? This innocence within your smile. Where are you now, brown child? Do you recall with boundless glee your infancy on mama's knee? Her concern was your destiny. Where are you now, brown child? Have you arrived at adult stage? Are you confused by sulk and rage? What have you carved upon your page? Where are you now, brown child? The torrent that poured on your head engulfed you with lost hope and dread. Let mama's hope endure, abide. Where are you now, brown child? Go ride your rainbow, reach for the sky, then mama's dream you'll satisfy. Your place reserved was near defiled. Go take your place, brown child. So where did that come from? Yes, yes. Commemoration of Martin Luther King. I call it human rights because that was the theme for that commemoration. And it goes thus. The beast roams over the plain. The raven soars free and high. Unacquainted with hunger or pain, of such I know, pray tell me why. Is it because some distant man had trespassed on my fatherland, to violate my mother earth, deny me of my right of birth? Moralistic, such a mystery. Realistic, my endless misery. Upon my feet, no shoe air worn. My swaddling stattered, ragged, torn. Reduced am I in human sight. I pray to God with all my might. Remove, remove my wretched plight. Restore my hope and human rights. Coronation in, you know, George V's coronation. Um, and there is, George V is there somewhere, but perhaps he's got missing on this bit. I've, the rest is a curtain at home. Yeah, I don't you know. know that I was young and my used to die from coronation. This is about one of the most outstanding black achievers, of whom very little is ever said. We speak of Mary Seacole. There is a story little told about a lady, black and bold. She braved the deep Crimean cold, compassion driven, Mary Seacole. O oh, noble lady, Jamaican born, you cross the ocean all alone. Jamaican born, a black Creole, God fearing, loving, Mary Seacole. There Mary was a visionaire, self-funded, Mary paid her fare. Where you are, God bless your soul. You're inspirational, Mary Seacole. Blessed 
blessed your memory divine, kinfolk of all humankind, the legacy you left behind, that black folk be of noble mind. And when, alas, the story's told, honors, tributes, pure as gold, will gall around your love and soul. For you, a deep respect we hold. God bless you and keep you well, Mary Seacole. Now that we've had that wonderful and satisfying rendition, and those of us who do sing will recognize the piece, it's very moving, we are going to do a moving quiz. <laughs> now that's going to move us. Our brain cells are going to be moved. And that will wrap up this evening, and I want you to go away talking about your experiences here today. Tell all your friends. Another exhibition next year. And, um, you know, some experiences of all sorts, but of the best sort, which this is an example of. But Haiti is good example. So you put down your number like you've got one. Yes. And Jamaica. For Saiso. For Jamaica? Haiti. Saiso. In Jamaica. I'm going to look for Jamaica just to see. Yeah. No, they haven't got it no. here on this map, you see. They haven't got it here. So we move on to Copra. Well, I've chosen to go now. They do, yes, they do. Yeah. It's Copra. I've got here the Copra, St. Lucia. Ah, that's yes. So I'll have to follow this map. Yes. Okay. Did anybody thought of St. Lucia? But they've got copra rather than copra. So nobody's got St. Lucia. Okay. Um, what about South Africa? Uh, let me see on my map. South Africa. I'm just looking. On this map, we've only actually got the West Indies, because I've got my oh, well, then, well, to book from the West Indies. <laughs> oh, you could have told us of it. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I said you it this way. question comes from the book, right, um, right. The West Indies, by Carter Harmon. Right. There's several, but I will yeah. accept it. South Africa. Because all the... Um, anybody else? The Britain produces sugar. Oh, not sugar beet. This is, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. You didn't say so, did you? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so, so I admit, I admit my mistake. Oh. And I was thinking, simply oh, because it was black. You were thinking of sugar cane. Yes, yes. Baker. Yes. Good luck. Yes, but we don't know why. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kingston on Thames and Baker. <laughs> no, that's... Like, that's oh, Kingston. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the trouble well, that's why I asked too. I can spell it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because it's focusing on Black history, oh, and um, I, I was thinking of. Um, I know there is another. Yes, yeah, the Kingston. Yes, the there Kingston. is another. It's it's no, it's Saint Vincent and Northern Grenadines, principal city. Saint Vincent and Northern Grenadines. So nobody's got oh, one. Well, we said there was another Kingston, that's what you are. Yes, yes. another Kingston yes. apart yes. from in Jamaica. Yes. Mm. yes. We, we didn't tell so you so um, next time I'll get my questions, I'm going to put them uh, not. You have to say yeah, not in the other. Yeah, not in the other. So the last question is the last question. Yeah. Port au Prince is known for its hops. True or false? False. So that's false. You yes, said that. False. Oh. And in what continent is the Gambia? Well, we've missed out Phillipsburg. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. Where is oh, Phillipsburg? Oh, Phillipsburg is known for its wheat. False. That's false. false. That's oh, wow. false. True or false? Where is Phillipsburg? Oh. Phillipsburg is, oh, this is new to me, Saba St. Eustatius St. Martin. I've heard of that word, St. Martin. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the, Gambia is in Africa. and the Gambia is in Africa. Yeah. Oh, yes, I got that. <laughs> so who's got seven? Oh, yeah. 